Okay, so um, we're happy to um, be here and to talk more about how we, uh, I mean, for example, Alibaba as well as uh, many, many companies trying to do is essentially about uh, building the so-called internal developer uh, platform. And so today uh, I will talk a little bit a little bit about how we build a internal developer platform at a web scale. So, well, the first question is, uh, what is that kind of system is? Uh, essentially, uh, we, call, we call this such kind of system uh, named the uh, Alibaba's uh, Unified Application Infrastructure. So this is how the whole picture looks like. Uh, so first of all, we are the uh, platform team and we build the uh, Unified Application infrastructure, which is essentially an internal developer platform. That's why we use this platform to serve both the, uh, the developers from Alibaba Group and the developers from Alibaba Cloud. But again, they are all internal developers. For, for example, for Alibaba Group, those developers are building the uh, core e-business of Alibaba, the company. For example, um, Taobao, AliExpress, Alipay, those applications are running on top of this application infrastructure. In the meantime, the developers from Alibaba Cloud, they're also uh, deploying the cloud services, the, pro the cloud product to this developer platform at will. And then essentially the external customers will use our public cloud product. And uh, those products are running as application in this infrastructure. That's why uh, we call it a unified application infrastructure, but there are uh, essentially it is a internal developer um, platform. Also by referencing that web scale, uh, I mean, we really are, we, we really are trying to run a Kubernetes cluster at very large scale. For example, um, in one of the, in one of the uh, largest cluster, we have more than 1 million containers running uh, with more than 10K application deployed per day. And we have, for example, I think a dozen of such clusters running in a whole infrastructure. And uh, we use this unified application infrastructure as a common application deployment and management system on top of the underlying data centers. And these data centers, we call them the runtime infrastructure. Uh, they are essentially the machines, right? The machine pools. And those machines, um, some of them are over internal machines, but some of them are actually the customer's machines. We actually do not care about that because we use Kubernetes as a common abstraction layer. Uh, but this um, platform actually can deploy application to not only Kubernetes, but also any kind of infrastructure, including, uh, for example, Alibaba Cloud. It allows you to deploy application, which is running in, even in other cloud, for example, in, in AWS or um, Google Cloud, it's totally possible. So the, this platform uh, is essentially um, runtime agnostic. It does not care about what kind of infrastructure regardless of its keep it Kubernetes or not, or where the cluster is, it do not care about them. It allows you to deploy and manage application in a consistent and a scalable experience to any kind of infrastructure you want. Uh, that is also another reason we call this um, platform the unified app infrastructure. Okay, so a common question is how we did that, how we did, how we achieved that, right? Um, so that's actually the main topic I want to share uh, in this talk. Uh, it's a project which named it Kubevela. And this project is a core component behind this uh, internal developer platform in our company. And uh, as I mentioned, it's the foundation for us to serve both developers from Alibaba Group as well as Alibaba Cloud. And it's also a uh, application delivery and management system that works across hybrid environments, regardless of what kind of structure you are trying to use but it provides you with a consistent and scalable approach to manage or deploy, or deploy your application. And it's also the solution of how Alibaba scale, uh, how our company, how our teams to adopt GitOps and infrastructure code. Uh, we, I will explain more about this part. And uh, what's most importantly is this project has to be open sourced. So first of all, let's look, at, look into detail about this kind of system. So essentially, Kubevela itself is a control plan uh, component. So it do not it do not to, it do not run in your runtime infrastructure. On the contrary, um, if you want to you, if you want to use Kubevela, you have to you know have some kind of uh, runtime uh, have some kind of control plan infrastructure 
uh, which in our case, we use Kubernetes. And we rely on, actually rely on Kubernetes as a control plane implementation. And uh, the reason I will explain more uh, later. Uh, but essentially, as long as you have this kind of control plane running, it will actually expose several uh, APIs to the users. Um, and the most important one of it is actually the application. Um, it's essentially a way for developers to defy the full deployment plan of this application. And and this and 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 in order to do that, uh, the developers will need to, uh, for example, claim what kind of components they want to deploy and what kind of traits, which are essentially operational behaviors, they want to attach to these components. And the Kubevilla actually support any kind of a component, including uh, Terraform modules, Helm chart, customized modules, or anything you want that can be run on the runtime infrastructure and um, we provided we provide a way uh, for you to claim anything as a deployable component and this is actually implemented by using q language q is a configuration language a dsl we, we will also introduce it a little bit later so essentially you can see here the kubernetes itself makes will actually give you the control plan to manage and deploy application in a consistent approach by giving you a um, higher level API, which is name is application. And um, all the other systems uh, will have integration with Kubevela itself, or the end users can directly use this uh, application API. And we also have a, a bunch of command line tools and a console uh, to make this approach even more even easier. And for the runtime infrastructures, as, as I mentioned, it actually can be anything, it can be public cloud, it can be a Kubernetes cluster, it can be uh, even the edge devices. So, well, this is a high level um, architectural design of this platform. Uh, let's go to more details regarding to how to use it. So for developers or any users of this kind of system, they, their experience is very, very simple because they just need to learn a single API, which name is application. For example, if you want to deploy a full website, um, to, uh, for example, a um, to a production environment, you just need to um, define a YAML file like this. And uh, in this YAML file, uh, it actually it claims two components. The first one is a ham chart. Uh, it's actually a WordPress ham chart. Uh, this is how you define the values for it. And also, uh, there is a database component, which is a AWS RDS instance. And for the ham chart, um, you can also claim to assign a, a canary, canary deployment strategy to it. Um, and this canary deployment strategy actually supports um, automatic promotion with an, uh, matrix analysis. And the imp implementation of this trait, canary trait, is actually a uh, flagger. And uh, for the database part, which is more interesting because it is not even a Kubernetes resource, right? It's AWS instance. That's why in the underlying implementation, this component is a Terraform module. So you can see here, uh, this is how we enable the developer to define a real uh, production level application, but without learning a bunch of tools, including Terraform, Kubernetes, Helm, they don't need to learn about that. They are all predefined components or traits in our system. And the user just needs to assemble them together and fill in the values which are already be, which, which has already been abstracted without leaking any um, underlying infrastructure details. And they can just do VILA up at YAML and the application will be deployed and reconcile and managed by the system. And again, for, for the developer themselves, they just need to learn several higher level concepts like component, they want to deploy, traits they want to attach. And uh, all of these are pretty fine in the system. But if you want, you can actually defy your own components or even your own trait. If, if, if that meets your requirement, you can totally do that. And this will be enabled by Q language. So one question um, when somebody saw, see this project always ask is, why use application as a main API? Why not something else, right? Why, why not just use, for example, Helm as an API, or why not use something more like um, a, a uh, for example, a workflow, right? A pipeline as an API. We also, the reason we choose to use application as the main API is that we found that our end users just want to deploy, which means they need a single source we choose to capture a full application deployment. And even with the cloud resources, 
with the cloud services they want, with every operational behavior they want. They just want to work on a single source we choose instead of um, working on a bunch of um, distributed YAML files or even distributed API with um, countless um, different systems. They don't want to do that. A uh, similar pattern also happens in Google or many, many companies. For example, Google has bulk config. So developers just write a small um, configuration file, which is uh, bulk, bulk config. And the, that bulk config will be a full description of your application you want to deploy. Uh, so when you submit that bulk, bulk config to the bug system, right? Bug will take over the rest of the things based on your um, descriptions of your application. This, this is exactly the same idea for Google So it gives it away. Um, to describe your application deployment, including the component, the operational behaviors, the cloud resources you want to want, you want to use, or anything else you want to have in order to make your application running. This is the first idea. And second idea is also the reason that we use um, the Kubernetes CRD as a, uh, a model of that of this application is we want to give a declarative experience to the end user. So they can just declaim the desired status of this application. And this is one of the key um, um, one of the key features that we, we leverage to avoid the configuration drift. Um, and this was enabled by the um, Kubernetes control con this was enabled by Kubernetes control loop of course. And uh, that's the reason we use Kubernetes as a control plane implementation because it will reconcile the desired state of your application deployment with underlying resources and, and the instances on the cloud. And the third reason, uh, but it's actually one of the most important reason is this kind of high level API actually gave a easier, but um, high level abstraction to our end users, which make them more focused on the needs of the application instead of the details of the infrastructure or orchestration system. So that's why that's um, that these are the reasons that we introduced a high level API named application as the main API of our system. So let's do a little bit deep dive into this object, which is um, very interesting because this application entity is not a traditional, you know, a CRD. Although it looks like a CRD, but it's actually not the traditional CRD because it's essentially a reference to a group of Q modules. For example, the component here, although it's a Helm chart, but in underlying implementation, it's actually a Helm release the queue module. It actually uh, is a queue module describes a Flux Helm release. And uh, similarly for the um, database component, it's actually a Terraform module, but again, it's described by using queue language. And, this, and also even for the trade for the canaro, for, for the canaro strategy is actually also a Q um, module, uh, which actually encapsulate a flag or resource inside. So you can see here, as this application CRD is not a traditional CRD at all. It's a reference of underlying Q modules and we call those modules definitions. So that's why if you look at the code of the Kubevela, it gives you some concept like component definition, trace definition, thing like that. So actually all of those definitions are actually Q modules. So essentially this object is a infrastructure as a code object. So by authoring this kind of application resource, you are actually assemble several Q modules together into an application and fill in the values that Q modules exposed to you. So you are basically writing code, but the code will be expressed as a declarative API, which is a application resource. That is a, one of the unique feature that Kubevela uh, in trying to do. So you can see there are some ideas here. So first of all, Kubevilla trying to leverage Q as a super glue here. It enables the system to glue everything you want to deploy or anything or everything you want to attach or to use to operate your component. So theoretically, Kubevilla allows you to glue everything, whether it's a Kubernetes resource, a Terraform module, a cloud formation stack or anything that you want to use to describe or manage your application. But in the meantime, it always gives you the consistent API like this to assemble those pieces together into the full application deployment. And the most more important is this object is a 
declarative resource, which means there is a control loop behind this resource to guarantee the deterministic of your deployment. So you don't need to worry about there will be configuration drift, which will be which is a common case in most infrastructure code systems. That also explains why we use such kind of such kind of architecture. I mean, we use infrastructure code behind a CRD because infrastructure as code like Q, like any other programming language, is perfect for building a higher a highly extensible yet easy to use application deployment experience. But as, as we can see, the configuration trick is really, really a problem here, especially when you are trying to use this kind of system in web scale. For example, in our case, we use this platform to serve more than thousands of applications and the 10 thousands of developers in the whole organization. If we just provide them with an infrastructure as code based command line tool or lightweight system, there will be tons of cases that configuration shift happen, and that is not acceptable. That's why we use a CRD, we use application resource to wrap all of these infrastructure code modules. And this enables us to leverage Kubernetes as a control plan to reconcile the real um, status in the clusters and the runtime infrastructures with the desired status, just like any Kubernetes resource can do. But again, this resource, the application, is essentially implemented with Q modules. So that's why it, it's, it still keeps the benefits of infrastructure code. For example, it's highly extensible. So you, your application CRD is able to defy everything as long as you provide the corresponding Q modules in the system. So it has no boundary, it has no restriction, it has no uh, opinion way, opinionated way to defy the, the, the components or uh, the, your application. So everything is flexible as long as you can write Q modules. That's why we use this kind of mechanism. Um, we use Q to implement the CRD and then we use Kubernetes control loop and we use Kubernetes as a control plan to deploy the whole applications to the runtime infrastructure. Um, this is actually, I will say, um, the, the, the main difference between the Kubevela system with any other application deployment system or um, platform and service system. But in the meantime, the, um, the infrastructure code, the Q modules will be able to do for you to design your own abstractions, which means you can significantly lower the bar for your end users to use this, this platform. So you don't need to, so they don't need to learn about the details of Kubernetes. They don't need to learn about the details of Terraform at all. So this uh, related question is, um, as I mentioned, this is actually how we adopt GitOps. And the reason we use this kind of system to adopt GitOps is quite straightforward. Uh, I just borrowed some pictures from a very interesting blog here. Um, um, this actually describes all our uh, issues very well. So the fundamental issue, I will say there are two main problems. The first is, you know, we are a big company and we are serving a lot of internal departments and uh, we don't know them at all actually. And they are just like external companies to us. So all of those teams, all of the departments, they have their own way to do CI and CD, especially for CD part. So most of them are not relying on a modern GitOps infrastructure to do that. They don't even know what they did up at all. And uh, in most cases, they cannot migrate to a, for example, a Git based workflow. They don't even use, some of them don't even do the traditional or typical um, Git based workflow at all. Not to mention to ask them to use the pull request or commit based or commit driven deployment and workflow. They don't have or they don't want to have, or they don't want to have the concept of configuration repo. For example, some of them just rely on a config configuration configuration file as part of their source code. I think this happens a lot. And uh, some have uh, some other ways, but uh, none of them is a GitOps based, I would say typical GitOps based workflow. So it will be very difficult for us to forcefully push a, another opinionated workflow to them. So this is the first uh, issue, uh, which means um, the typical full Git-based workflow do not work for many of them. And the second issue is as long as you are trying to use this platform to manage 
a huge, a large number of applications serve a lot of teams, the complexity of this system will grow very, very fast. For example, the number of the YAML files you have to manage in your GitHub system and the, the, and the um, patches and the um, YAML files you have to manage across different deployment environments, as well as the um, rollout strategies, the deployment and, and the, 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 the rollout um, policies, everything actually can belong into different system. But if you want to manage all of these YAML files, all of these objects in a Git repo, it's the number is huge and the complexity is very, very high. And that is um, too much for most of our developers who just want to focus on their applications itself. And uh, not to mention, we have to force them to learn about, for example, a GitOps layout to organize all of these YAML files or our we'll call them um, configuration manifest. So all of these actually raise a higher, very hard bar for these developers to adopt GitOps. And this actually issue will be um, even worse uh, considering we have so many, many target environments to deploy and so many, many applications to manage so in that case, if we want to go into a pure GitOps workflow, it will actually bring huge, huge burden to the end users, to developers in our company. That's why we build a system. And that system is Kubevela. There's another reason, which is also I think need to mention is that all of these teams already have their own CI CD system and all of them works very well in their own scenario. But GitOps essentially introduce a new model, which is pull based, but most of the existing systems are push based, but the users are totally fine with that. We don't, and we can't change the situation very quickly. So we also need to find a way uh, to have a modern deployment system leverage GitOps benefit, but it can also work with existing CI/CD system. For example, if they want to use push model, we should still enable this. So all of this, all of these issues happens a lot in companies, not only in Alibaba, but also in companies similar to Alibaba itself. That's why we build a system which can solve these issues, or I will say a more like a higher level abstraction to hide the complexity and uh, to be able to integrate with existing platforms. So this is um, our typical workflow looks like. So first of all, we endorse the model to split CI and CD. This is a key part of um, what we want to do in our company. Though, even though, as I mentioned, there are some many, many blockers to, for our end user to adopt the full GitOps model, but there are something we insist, this is a clear boundary between CI and CD. So in that case, the existing CI CD system will also be changed, but just a little bit. So the, all the CI pipeline they have today, no need to change. They just connect with, your, uh, with their source code repo and then generate some kind of artifact in the registry. And they can use existing systems fully in this case. But the reason we said there, there is a boundary between CI and CD is that whenever they want to do CD, they need to adopt, they need to decide which kind of model they want. They can go with push model just like today. This is one feature that could be really enabled because if they want to go push, so in this step, they just push an application YAML to a Kubevela cluster instead of to the runtime cluster. So in the older times, they will do Kube control apply a configuration file to the runtime cluster, for example, the production or test cluster. But in this case, they continue push. They don't need to change but they will push a application YAML to a Kubevela cluster, which is a control plane. So Kubevela will then take over the rest of the application delivery workflow, and then distribute the application to the runtime cluster by, existing, by exactly leveraging the GitOps workflow. In the, in the, I mean, for example, to leveraging Flux, and we call this subscription. So the runtime cluster will subscribe with certain artifact distributed channel. And the implementation in this subscription is actually GitOps toolkit. So that's why Kubevela itself is always trying to leverage the GitOps benefits. But 
it gives the flexibility for our users to choose if they want to do push model or not. So if they choose to go to the modern way, then it will be a typical, very typical GitOps workflow. So they will actually manually or automatically configure a configure repo. And in that repo, again, there will be a application YAML stored there. And uh, the Kubevela will sync this YAML file to itself. And again, the subscription channel will be responsible to pull the artifacts to runtime clusters. But as I mentioned, Kubevela also support Terraform, support CloudFormation. So even for the cloud services, there is a sub subscription channel for them. Another benefit of this pipeline is just as we mentioned, um, the developers always work on an application YAML instead of a bunch of uh, underlying runtime resources. They're too much for them. So no matter what, how, how complex your application is, the developer only need to work on one manifest to describe the deployment plan, even it's across environments. For example, from test to staging to production, it can, it's, the strategy here can also be de described in this manifest. And then Kubevela will take over the rest of the workflow with full leverage of the GitOps tool and uh, GitOps toolkit. So this is how our pipeline looks like. Uh, it actually, I'm trying to use Kubevela as a control plan, as application delivery control plan here, which gives the most of the benefits of the GitOps, but enable uh, some legacy scenarios, but also support the modern GitOps workflow at the meantime. So more and more features regarding to this model is also um, coming, for example, uh, how to do promotion from environment uh, to another environment with um, patch per environment to be defined. And we are also working on um, monitoring the logging traits so the developers can attach a monitoring traits to their application. And we are also trying to open source our uh, command line tool and GUI console and uh, to open source some integration integration with this existing CD pipeline, for example, you can define a CD workflow in this case. And um, these things are already happening in open source community. So a summary here is that the Kubevela system, the project is a modern application deployment and a management system across hybrid environment. Itself is um, use Kubernetes as a control plan and itself is also a control plan level component. It leverage GitOps by default, um, but with a um, lower onboarding bar with legacy system supported. And the core idea behind Kubevela is programmable. The, so it's everything in Kubevela is Q module. It's highly extensible and very efficient to respond to user needs. For example, if they want a new component, if they want to have some change on existing trait or existing components, they can do that by themselves just by just to change it change the several lines of the queue file. And uh, the reason we do that is we really don't want to create some in-house or inextensible platform in our company. And of course, our customers always change their ideas very frankly. So we need to have the very, very extensible way to respond to that. And um, last but most important is that we use Kubernetes as a control plan. We use the reconcile loop to manage all of these infrastructure code modules and we expose a declarative API to our end users to fill in the values. And this brings us with full automation and deterministic built by Kubernetes control, control loop. Well, this is everything I want to share with you today. And we're all welcome to look at, support, look at this project and um, anything, any feedback are all welcome. Okay, so this is the end of my and today's talk. And you can reach out to me through Twitter or through GitHub.